In this video, we're going to be talking a little more about Euler characteristic. <clears throat> so remember, a few videos, videos ago, we talked about Euler characteristic. And for a planar embedding of a connected graph, you get the Euler characteristic by calculating vertices, minus edges, plus faces. And remember, you have to have an embedding to be able to talk about faces, right? An embedding means that you don't have any edge crossings. Okay, <clears throat> but what about graphs that are not planar? Or what about graphs that are not connected? Um, so in the next two videos, we're going to be answering these two questions. So this video is going to focus on this question, disconnected graphs. Okay, so let's just start by playing around a little bit and see what's happening. So find the Euler characteristic of the following planar graphs. Okay, so here I've got an embedding. And I want to calculate the Euler characteristic. Okay, so vertices, minus edges plus faces. Now if this were a connected graph, we know already it would be 2. Okay, so let's see what it is. Now this is obviously a disconnected graph, right? Three components. So let's see what we've got here. So vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? Nine vertices. Edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Faces, 1, 2, one, two, three, four. Right? Because remember, this infinite face, there's only one infinite face, right? And it's sort of compass encompassing all of this stuff. Number three here is the infinite face. Uh, this doesn't have any faces. Okay, so four faces. So nine minus nine, four. Okay, four. Not two. Um, okay, so we're going to see if we can notice the trend here. Here we've got this disconnected graph, and it's got Euler characteristic 4. If it were connected, we know it would only have Euler characteristic 2. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so vertices minus edges plus faces. Vertices, 8 vertices. Edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Faces, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six. Okay, so three this time. Okay, so here we had this disconnected graph. It had Euler characteristic four. This disconnected graph had Euler characteristic three. All right, let's try one more. So this time, five vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six edges, and faces one, two, three, four, four faces, so three again. Okay, so can you guys see what's happening? <clears throat> if these were connected and planar, they would all have characteristic two. Okay, but all of these are disconnected, and they have these two match. Right? They have characteristic 3, both of them. So you might think about what these graphs have in common. And then this graph has Euler character characteristic 4. So you might want to think about how these characteristics compare versus how these graphs compare. So if you want to pause and think about it, you can. So essentially what's happening is every connected piece of the graph adds one to the Euler characteristic. Right? If this had been just a single component, it would have Euler characteristic 2, but this has two extra, if you want to think about them as extra, components, right? This has three components, so it goes up by two, one for each of the extra components, right? So two, three, four total. Okay, same thing here, right? It usually would be two if it was just one piece, but we have an extra piece, which bumps up the Euler characteristic to three. Same thing here, right? It would normally just be two if we had one piece, but we have an extra piece which bumps it up to three. Okay, and that pattern is true in general. <clears throat> so here's the result. If you have a planar embedding of any graph, right? So planar, so it has to be a planar graph, right? But if you have a planar embedding, now it doesn't have to be connected, just any graph. The Euler characteristic is calculated by doing vertices minus edges plus faces, and that's always going to be 2 for planarity. And then you're going to add the number of components and then subtract 1. 
right? So why are we subtracting one, right? Because every graph has one component. So we want to sort of take away the one we have to have and then all the extra components we want to add on top. So here, this kg is the number of components in the graph. So now, we don't need that last version of the Euler characteristic. This one takes care of it perfectly well. Because if you do have a connected graph, this kg is just going to be 1, and these two are just going to cancel each other out, and it'll give you the characteristic as 2, just like it should. So now this is the more general version of the theorem we learned before. So you don't need the old version anymore. This one is perfectly good. Okay, so this is a little more about how to calculate the order Euler characteristic of disconnected graphs. And in the next video, we're going to talk about calculating the Euler characteristics um, for graphs that are not planar.